So the National Levy Database is, like the, the, the name implies, is a national database. You can Google it, it'll come up. The intent is to have every levy in the country in there. So right now, all the federal levies are in there. Just to correct something Renee said, it went live on June 4th. The LSACs will be loaded on August 4th. So they had two dates there. But if you go in there right now, today, you'll see all of our levies. We're still in the process of populating some of the details. But I think all of our federal levies, levies the federal government either has built and operates and maintains or built and turned over to a non-federal sponsor to operate and maintain are in there. It's gonna have basic parameters, basic details, numbers of people living behind the levy, uh, executive summaries of recent inspections of the levies, overview of what's behind the levy, and then a discussion of the risk of those levies. Part two of these initiatives we're talking about this morning is the LSAC classification system, levy safety action classification. So that is a risk classification of the levy. Levies are built for a purpose. If there wasn't a flood risk, we wouldn't have built levies. We've been here as we celebrate the 300th anniversary of New Orleans. We've been at work on levies here in New Orleans for 300 years, so uh, we know we face flood risk here. The LSAC is designed to help communicate to everybody, the public, local leaders, elected leaders, national leaders, what the risks are. It'd be great to have both the, the NLD and the LSAC, so everyone has a comprehensive picture, nationally standardized in terms of terms, in terms of risk assessments, so we really know what we're dealing with. There's many benefits to having both of these initiatives in place. Um, the LSAC is a combination of three things. One is the hazard. So what is the hazard that that levy was designed to defend against? Here in Louisiana, South Louisiana in particular, New Orleans District, our two main hazards are the Mississippi River, floods every year, brings hazard every year, brings billions of gallons draining over 40% of the United States, flows right into the Mississippi and the Atchafalaya River. So we, we, we're guaranteed to have that flood risk for as long as we live here, every single spray. Obviously every, every flood is different in terms of size and intensity, but every spring Mississippi floods, that's no secret. The other risk is hurricanes. So we are on the Gulf Coast. We have lots of levees across the state designed to help defend against coastal surge. So most of our levees are designed for the 1% storm, the 100 year storm, also known as. But if we get a storm bigger than that, the chances of those levees being overwhelmed is significant. So that's the hazard. Part two is the system designed to defend against that hazard i.e. the levees, the walls, the pump stations, as well as the evacuation system. What, what infrastructure we have in place to help protect the public against those hazards? How are they built? What were they designed for? How have they been maintained? How, what kind of shape are they in? Have they been tested before? Have they been loaded or not? Most of our levees here in South Louisiana have been loaded and regularly loaded, but, but believe it or not, some of our levees haven't ever really been fully tested. Um, and then part three of the LSAC classification is the consequences. So what happens if those levees are overwhelmed? They're hit with an event greater than they were designed for. Something happens that the levees don't perform or are simply overwhelmed. What are the consequences? So that's a function of what's behind the levee, population and infrastructure. Here in South Louisiana, particularly East Bank of the Mississippi River from Baton Rouge to New Orleans, there, there's a, uh, well over a million people and billions of dollars in infrastructure, from private homes on up to major industrial facilities that if there were to flood, consequences nationally, consequences to individual citizens here who are flood, but as well as consequences really to the whole nation, to the, the GDP, the national economy, the whole engine that is South Louisiana, if that is impacted, those consequences are significant. So the LSAC comes up with a five tiered classification system from very high to low risk. So we have a, a gamut of all those. I'll let Jennifer get into those details, but some of our levies are high risk. Those are levy system, again, this is, this is not a levy specific to the levy. This isn't a grade, this isn't a rating. 
This is a classification of the whole system. Our levees, I'm happy to report, are in great shape. In the Greater New Orleans area, all the work we've done on the Hisser system since Katrina, it's been phenomenal. Best hurricane defenses in the country, probably the world. Mississippi River levee since the 2011 floods has gotten a tremendous amount of federal investment. Uh, just this spring, spring of 2018, we had the eighth largest flood on the Mississippi in the last hundred years. No one flooded. The levees performed as they were intended to perform. They performed better than they did in 2011 because of all the work we've done since 2011. So levees in great shape. Uh, local sponsors, the levee districts, do a phenomenal job. So they are total professionals. They take their job serious. They are out there every single day working to maintain and care for the levees, the walls, the pump stations that they are responsible for. So the LSAC, if you see a high risk LSAC, that is not anything to do with uh, levy districts aren't doing their job. The Corps is not doing its job. Quite the contrary. It's, we're doing our job. We're, we're taking this very seriously. And yet the residual risk is always going to be there. And that's simply a matter of fact, living in South Louisiana. I think everybody knows that. At the river flood every spring, we have hurricanes. Mother Nature can hit us with a massive hurricane on relatively short notice every hurricane season. So all those factors compound into having flood risk. Each segment of levee, each levee system has a different classification. Most of ours here in the Orleans District are moderate or high. So what does that mean? It means you face flood risk. If you live in South Louisiana, if you live behind the levees, you should thank the levee district every single day for what they do to help you reduce your risk, help defend you from flood risk, and yet there is flood risk. So the chance of New Orleans being hit with a massive storm where the mayor and the governor have to call for an evacuation, that chance is always out there. So no matter how good our levees are, no matter how good the HISDER system is, if there's a call for evacuation, you've got to go. And personally, I think everybody in Louisiana should have flood insurance. I really think everybody in the country should have flood insurance. You know, you get told you have to have flood insurance if you live in a certain flood zone by FEMA or to get a mortgage or whatnot. But we've seen that story countless times over and over where people flood who didn't have flood insurance because they didn't have to have flood insurance. So think about your car. You have car insurance. The relative value of your car compared to your house in terms of your investment, your personal investment, your house is the biggest investment for pretty much every single citizen. So why in the world would you not have flood insurance? Um, whether FEMA or your bank tells you to have it or not, you should have it. If you don't live in a flood zone, flood insurance is, is relatively cheap to get. So uh, that's really what these two initiatives, the NLD and the LSACs are designed for. So many people unfortunately take levies for granted you live behind the Mississippi River levee, you haven't flooded in a very long time. It's really since the 27 flood, since there's been significant damage caused by the Mississippi River. So people take that for granted, but you still face that risk, whether you, you're aware of it or not, the Mississippi River presents risk. There's also hurricane, the hurricanes, as I said, uh, the, the rainfall flooding, the LSACs will address some of that, but there's so many places without levees. We've seen as recently as the August 5th flood here in, in New Orleans and the August 16th flood, really throughout much of the state, all flooded, that uh, the, you know, there were no levees there to help defend against that. All ties to the flood risk we face here in South Louisiana. So with that, um, We'll answer questions uh, at the end. I'm happy to do any interviews we have at the end, but I'm going to uh, turn it over to, to Jennifer Stevens, who's our Levy Safety Program Manager, who will dig more into the uh, nuts and bolts of these two initiatives.